Hey folks, it's Chris again here with Expedition STEM. I'm joined today with uh, App Surfer and uh, Anand and Aniket uh, here to tell us a little bit about their platform. So tell me, what, what is App Surfer? Why do I need it today? Yeah, App Surfer is one of the most coolest uh, things of our generation. Yeah, so what we do is we stream apps from the cloud. Uh, we take everything to the cloud. Uh, we, there is no more need for any user to download or install apps. All the pain of nozzle of doing that is gone. Uh, just use App Surfer, get any app in instances. So it's kind of like a, a Netflix for all the applications that I need, or, or a virtual server, virtual machine. You're dot on. Yeah, exactly. You, you, it is. It streams all your apps from the cloud, and then you don't have to get 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 it on your phone anymore. Um, and it uses a very unique technology in which you can you can get this uh, really high quality when you are connected in Wi-Fi. When you don't, it, it's very seamless. That's uh, that's about it. I mean, like Google has been trying to reach there, but we reached out ahead. And then we, we have an awesome technology in the back which would get any apps that you want instantly there. Now, are there limitations in terms of the size of app, runtime of app, the GPU, CPU requirements, or anything like that? Right, we launched our demo last week. Uh, we are initially focusing on the lightweight apps. Uh, the heavy ones, like the gaming apps and all that, are going to come later. Uh, for now, we are focusing on the ones which you can, like, let's say, help or like, you know, notes or Gmail and all your Facebook and all that can be accessed right now. Uh, the heavy gaming apps, we, there is limitations to it. Um, and we also provide like a 8 GB space in the back for every app, uh, the, for, for, for your instance that is running in the back, which you can store your data as well. Now, uh, one question I would have is, with my data being stored, uh, this being in the cloud, uh, what, what steps have you guys taken in terms of security and encryption and for me to be able to protect my data? I mean, encryption's been a big story with Apple and the FBI lately, so how can I be sure that all of my data, all of my uh, user information, uh, uh, payment information, if I'm using a payment app, how, how can I be sure that all that is uh, encrypted or safe? Absolutely, this is the great question uh, we wanted to solve. Part of our solution is also provide you high security. So we have a double encryption method in which your data is being saved and your apps are being saved. On top of it, we when you actually save your, your apps in the cloud, not in your phone, we, we stop these apps from stealing data from you. So running in the background, taking data from you, we completely provide you a secure way to uh, access the app. At the same time, we prevent your current theft that is happening. So that's part of our motto, keep it safe, keep it very secure. So that's also kind of helping alleviate some of the concerns with international markets where you have to have data residency or any data uh, sharing and privacy rights that have in Germany or UK or, or uh, even uh, France, you know, denying uh, Facebook recently. Right, exactly. That's the whole point. We'll give users the complete access where whom to share with the data and what to share. And then if only the user allows it, it's not about like giving a big, um, like I see, seen some of the apps which gives a big agreement in the, in the, in, in the initial terms and then they allow, the, take your data and then use it in the back and everything. So we want to prevent that. Every time uh, somebody is trying to use your data, we make sure that the user is known about it and it's transparent about it. And that's why we create this environment where uh, your apps are saved securely. So uh, I, now I've got everything running in the cloud. What's the benefit of running in the cloud? I, of course, it, storage is always going to be an issue. You've got a phone with a finite amount of storage on it. Uh, am I limited to the amount of storage I have in the cloud? And what, what are the technical limitations why I would want to use uh, app, you know, app Surfer versus a local installation? Right, a couple of things. You, you're spot on on the storage space. Like a lot of the uh, people, including the big gamers, want to use their phone totally on their games, which, are, which they want to interact, and then they want to remove all the other apps which they don't use regularly in the cloud. So they move everything to the cloud. The second biggest pain point is if, let's say, we want to only use the app only once. Let's say I get a New York Times article and I want to read it, but now I have to download and install the New York Times article just to read one article, which is such a pain of pain pain point and, and, and it's a bad user experience. So we want to remove that. Like you want to read New York Times, you just go use App Surfer, immediately it opens up and you can start using it. So that's another point, uh, problem that we are solving. Uh, apart from that, we are also like thinking about like how um, how can we, the storage there is, initially we provide 8 GB based on user, usage and how much users want it. We are, we are going to expand it and grow. And right now, right now you see like uh, the, the app works really, really well in Wi-Fi and 4G mode. In 3G and 2G modes, it's going to be less because of the latency that is created by the network, it's going to be less. But if you see 80% of the time users are in Wi-Fi mode and only 20% of the time they're in carrier network mode. So we still provide a lot of value there. And, and we believe in the future the networks are going to be more and more faster. And, and this is for the future. This is how the phones are going to be. When you're going to have like a sleek small phone, it's going to be a, just a display. Imagine the glass sleeks that people want to carry. 
and all your all your apps and everything is running on the cloud. All your processing power is transferred to the cloud, so you don't have to really carry a heavy phone anymore. So it's like as sleek as that, and your battery usage is going to be less. Okay, so so I'm using a, a, a proxy, uh, a virtual environment now. Um, if I'm doing that, you know, am I working on a, a, a new operating system, or at least is this kind of a, a virtual thin client that works on my phone? It, and if so, is that installed from my uh, network operator? Is that installed by a Android or, or my phone, the manufacturer? How, how does the installation work? Right. It is actually like a phone on the cloud. So it's a different oper operating system and entirely different device for you. Uh, so uh, it would be same for you whether you use it from an Android or iOS or from the uh, web. Uh, but the thing that you would access would be on the cloud, same operating system that you would be using. Yeah, yeah it's, like you, it's like users having two mobile phones. One of your phones that you've given in the cloud and one is still with you. So all your instances are created twice. So you are still log in with your Gmail ID and or email IDs with that, with that instance. That is how we authenticate. But it's like running two things. So the reason why, the, in, imagine the future, right? When your phone dies in a, in a case and you want to order a Uber. Uh, and then you can go online. We'll provide a HTML version. You can access your same Uber app from the cloud, the instance that is running there, and order Uber. So there's no more problem of like having to have everything in your phone. So are we subscription model? Are we uh, a pay for single instance? Uh, what, how do consumers get it? Uh, and how can I install it? Right, the good news is uh, it's free for consumers. It's a great news. Um, the, the, the part, the way we want to monetize in the future is like YouTube. Just let users start using it more and more. At some point we will uh, try to do like ad monetization model in which we can provide like interesting apps that people will like, hey, try this new app out. We'll launch it in the cloud, no more downloads and installs, just open it right away. So that's our model. Uh, we want to give everything free for the users and grow as much uh, value to the users. Yeah. Uh, any chance you can give me a quick walkthrough and show, show us a little bit of the platform? Yeah. Uh, so as you can see, uh, uh, App Surfer application is launched in that it will connect to the uh, remote instance. It's similar to a launcher screen uh, that you would see. Uh, list of apps and you can click on any of them and it would launch instantly for you. So this is Facebook running from the server streaming to your device. It's, it looks and feels almost as if it is uh, installed locally. So you can, you can use it the same way that you would uh, always use uh, on your phone. Uh, so you, you press back, you again come back to launch a screen. You can, uh, you can basically uh, search for any applications like an app store. Uh, so you can search by categories and names, etc. And the apps that you have, haven't used till now, you can st still use them uh, uh, there and they will appear in, in your launcher screen. Uh, so you can log in with, log in with any of the other uh, options that you normally see, like you can log in with Facebook, log in with Google or any other login provider that you may have installed on your cloud-based phone, uh, app, uh, per se. Uh, you, we give access to location, so uh, your location is given to the, uh, to the application running on, uh, when you use it. So here you can see the data that is being used by all the installed applications on your phone. So it gives you an option to basically uninstall apps that you would like to use on App Surfer. So that much amount of data you would free up from your phone and uh, it's a good feature for you because you, you get to see what applications are using how much data and you can select which apps to uninstall and free up more space uh, from your device. Uh, the, the, there is other feature also where you can basically uh, sync if, there is, uh, if an app is not available on App Surfer and you have it on your phone, you can just sync it, that application to App Surfer and start using it on App Surfer. App Surfer connected here and then if I want to la launch, uh, launch like a Keep or Notes app, so it, it's, it's in a separate instance which is, ha which is going on and then you can start using it. See here, it's, it's live right now. So we can actually stream any app from the cloud and then we have a huge database where we sync it with different users and we can right away use it. So there's no more need for having your apps in your local phone. Now, do we have any latency problems with streaming from the cloud at all? Exactly, so it depends on your network. If you're in Wi-Fi mode, it's really, really fast and it doesn't have that much latency. But if you're in 3G or 2G mode, it is. But more and more, I see users are moving into 4G. Uh, that, that is a good sign for us because like in 4G, it works as, as much good as in Wi-Fi. So that's the, that's the, the other side, yeah. Well, folks, that's uh, App Surfer. Uh, go check it out. Uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing a little bit more of it in the future. Again, uh, AppSurfer.com.